How deep sleep may help the brain clear Alzheimer's toxins. There's a new study. I know we talked about it back when you started wearing a Fitbit once upon a time, whether you get the deep sleep or you don't get the deep sleep with the, with the sleep tracking. Sleep tracking could be big business. It could be a huge thing if people start to take it seriously and read studies like this. The brain waves generated during, during deep sleep appear to trigger a cleaning system in the brain that protects it against Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. They put brains under the fMRI, high-resolution fMRI. If you scroll down, Will, it's really intriguing. You see the brain. You see the cerebrospinal fluid flowing through there, washing the brain clean. I don't know about you, but I want that to happen when I'm sleeping. I want that garbage collection system working the way it should, as you would want it to. During deep sleep, waves of cerebrospinal fluid coincide with temporary decreases in blood flow. Less blood in the brain means more room for the fluid to carry away toxins, including those associated with Alzheimer's disease. Are you getting to sleep, Will? I try. Eight hours a day. You get eight hours? Yes. But do you feel good in the morning? Yes, I do. Nice. Well, I sleep in the basement, so it's like... Quiet? You know, yeah, it's cold, it's cool. nice. Yeah, right. It's comfy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some disruption to the way sleep is working could potentially be contributing to the decline in brain health. See, here's another thing. Well, the quality of sleep. A lot of people can keep track of the time. They can say, I went to bed at this moment. I woke up at this moment. Th that analysis is easy. I slept a certain number of hours. And generally speaking, that's a great start. But as we learned, we started to track it a little more. Not all sleep is created equal. Mm -hmm. People who have sleep apnea, for example, they're not getting the deep because they keep waking up because of the breathing. And they got to get on a CPAP. And you don't know the way you're sleeping. So you got to get that deep stuff. Yes. And, and, and a lot of that comes down to other aspects of your life too, like diet, exercise. Uh, potentially stress. Maybe you're looking at the screen too much. And so then it's taking you longer to get to the right stage of sleep. It's all very interesting. Mm -hmm. People start to think about it because you gotta, you're gonna be using that brain for a bit. Nah. A little bit at least. Yeah. A couple more weeks or something. Mm. And so you take care of it. I don't know. You got one brain, I think. Yeah. As far as I know. Many stomachs though. Do you? Way to Hold go. Hold a lot more in. Way to go. Yeah, we actually, we got to go, we got to go to that, the new barbecue over there. New barbecue? Yeah, we we all should take a trip over there. Because I, I went and it was, it okay. was a time. All yeah. right. Shout out, 3,000 miles. Uh, so anyhow, these types of studies are good because then people start to pay attention, the research improves, and who knows, it's probably, fu probably funded by the sleep tracking devices, probably funded by Fitbit. Yeah. So then everyone gets scared and goes by a Fitbit and sees how the deep sleep is doing. Mm. You see how that goes? Well, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? That's business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 